TNGM The Show presents... Talking Nerdy, March 2024. With your hosts, Pablo Gunner. The Ambassador. And our guest. Special guest. Oh, Marvin Goof here. Marvin Goof, yes, who did a Dune 2. He did our Dune 2 review. Dune Part 2 review, to be more specific. And so we are here to talk nerdy to you. We've been doing this, what, like almost 13 years now? Yeah. Right? Crazy. So we are here to waste our time so you don't have to, right? Like we're going to watch everything good or bad that's nerdy. You know, try to play as many things, do as many things so you don't waste your time. You can save it for the best of the best, Absolutely, right? Yeah. So that's what we're here to deliver on. Instead of watching eight hours of Halo, maybe just... A few minutes of us. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. that's one thing we're going to be covering. So we're going to cover... We're going to be covering... Today we're going to be covering Dune 2 Part 2. These two saw it more in-depth, right? You did a spoiler for your review. You guys are going to go in-depth. And I'm going to get all the spoilers. I'm going to I'm gonna be the one, you know, interviewing, so to speak. Maybe. We'll see. Uh, you saw Kung Fu Panda 4, so we're going to go into that a little bit. Invincible Season 2 Part 2 is out. There's been a couple episodes, so we'll talk about those a little bit then we'll cover x-men 97 which has had a couple episodes so far so we'll talk about that a little bit uh bad batch season three which is also the final season uh there's a few more episodes since our last podcast so i'm going to get a little bit into that and then of course shogun will be covering that pretty deep because there's been quite a few episodes halo we're going to finish that off because we did half the episodes last month now we're going to do a f the rest then the four and then just a full summing up of it then maybe a little nintendo pokemon direct to, we'll talk about the acolyte trailer yeah and then of course we're going to cover the nerdy stuff that is coming out for april and then we'll you know talk about our merch a little and, and some shout outs and, and that should be good cool let's get into it doing part two i want to hear about it <sighs> oh so uh if you're not familiar with dune the first two movies are one book so that's why when you go in it feels like starting where the other one left off because basically that's what it does there might be just a little bit of time ahead but not even not much indeed that was like to me that was the surprise that they started it so right afterwards i was actually really excited about it and it's yeah like, oh, and you actually see everything evolve and what it yeah like becomes. you, you you can tell Paul was with them for a little bit longer than in the movie, but not much because you're still at the point where he is needing to become a tribe member. Mm -hmm. Then you learn about the northern and southern tribes and how they're very different from each other. Yeah, and in that case, like the, that was another thing. I mean, I I read the book. I forgot you read the book. Yeah, I haven't read you? it. Okay, because that's actually a difference that's not in the book. All of the Fremen there actually were all 100% behind him. There wasn't this difference between the North and South. So I thought, as a person who read the book, that was a really interesting sort of add. And the dichotomy of just having the mother go to the South, trying to sow the legend that, that, we're, that everyone was just kind of buying into like Stilgar, like uh, and, uh, Javier Bardem's character, very fundamentalist, religious believer. He's from the South. So yeah. trying to sew all that was really interesting. Mm, but Stilgar, oh my gosh. What <laughs> what a character. Like he he was he was one you didn't really you didn't know him last movie, but this movie you start getting more and more of an idea of who he is. Mm -hmm. At first he seems to have some doubts but he hoping that is true but i think about halfway through he just like puts his full support into for paul indeed he's he starts to see the signs and he buys into it um and i mean that's the whole really interesting thing about the dune universe is the the sort of idea of prophecy and messiahs and how some people just shouldn't have that amount of power. <laughs> and that's kind of the whole thing. Uh, and so, yeah, I was just so happy with how things turned out. Just because of, they got the tone right. Like, it was serious enough, but also uh, 
the character, like depth of character with everyone was really well expressed, I feel like. I mean, would you agree? Yeah, I would agree. And uh, no, Zendaya wasn't in there as much as uh, I thought she was going to be, mm. which is more of a relief than anything else. <laughs> but they had enough of her where it was really effective. And they really built her character well. And then they also used her for a little bit of comic relief at some moments as well mm -hmm. but when i got to like battle she was pretty awesome indeed exactly like that that was something that did surprise me about her performance as well i think she's showing a lot of potential for something like that and i mean as a person who read the book it's another thing that's really interesting is the way that chani was done is also different from the book like she was always 100% behind Paul being the like, Muad'Dib and the whole mystique of him, right? But they're showing, uh, at the end of this movie, she's sort of at odds with him and doesn't really like the way that he's approaching anything. So it's, it's opening up this, again, interesting sort of uh, way to take the movies to the next sort of how can I say it, like, the next sort of nuance, I'd say. Because Paul, by the time this movie is over, he is a tyrant. Like, 100%, he is not a good guy. And she, as opposed to the book, she's turning around and saying, you're, you're basically not who I thought you were. And she's, you know, who knows, it could turn into her being, like, leading a rebel sect or something like that. That's kind of what I'm looking forward to, is maybe her opposing Paul in some level in the next, in the next movie, so... Yeah, because basically, towards the end, basically, Paul realizes that if he doesn't take on the mantle of Messiah, it's just not going to work, and they're going to just be back to square one mm -hmm. before you know it. But the problem with taking on the mantle is, and playing the game of politics is, you become what you hate. Exactly. So it's almost like... At least I feel for people who are fans of Breaking Bad, I feel like this movie has this really interesting idea of this really well-intended good character that, through force of choice, has to turn to something that he never thought he would actually end up doing. He opposed the whole idea, because, I mean, it was manufactured, too. You know, this wasn't real religion or anything, at least how we would think of it, you know. It was his mother's organization planting a story and he didn't want to buy into it. He was opposed to it. And now... Wow. Yeah. They, they knew the story, but his mother's organization didn't want it to happen. Yeah, not basically, quite then, yeah. <laughs> because basically it's talking about that organization being overthrown, mm -hmm. which is kind of the organization that runs the galaxy. And uh, they... They're always behind the scenes with all the leaders and influence them. You could say it's kind of like the Portuguese in Shogun. Well, first let me thank you for answering the ad. Now, what do you feel qualifies you to be an effective babysitter for Stewie? A gente é ótima com os meninos. Uh, yeah. Uh, we couldn't run an ad that said no Portuguese, but, um, no Portuguese. Oh, okay. okay. The Portuguese are gradually, like, changing people so that they can just do a full takeover of Japan. Mm. But, uh, obviously, things get in the way. Mm. And just how in Dune, things got in the way as well. Indeed. And, of course, it's the action movie. Like, yeah. reading the book... And it's always so interesting because the way the book presents itself, a lot of stuff is done almost in past tense. Like Florence Pugh's character actually has usually a paragraph at the beginning of every chapter. And, she, you know, that character's trying to allude to what's about to happen. And uh, <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah, I had a good time watching that movie. It was so good. Oh, gosh, so many good effects, so many good characters. I, like I said, I said in my review, Austin Butler, I think, was the best performance of the whole thing. Because, I mean, he plays a complete psychopath so well. <laughs> I was so surprised. And I'm like, yep, that, that's, that's Bade Rafa. He did, yeah. it, he did it really well. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I think, I thought that was crazy to see them trying to manipulate him. <laughs> 
Am I interrupting? Not at all. Fred, I'd like you to meet your new secretary, Miss Sharon Stone. My secretary? Personal secretary, Mr. Flintstone. That is, of course, if you want me. It kind of works, but at the same time, like, I don't think it's working as well as you think it would. Exactly, yeah. He's, he's the kind of character that would love, because there's this whole, like, put your hand in the box situation, if you saw the first movie. Mm -hmm. You know, they put Fade through that to test him. He's the kind of guy that likes that. So, <laughs> it's, it's he doesn't really, you know, how can I say? It's, it's more keyed into his disposition. Like that's how I will say. So he wasn't really manipulated in that way. He's he's just doing what he loved in that case. He's just like, well, I know what you're doing, but I'm going with it because our interests align. Pretty much, yeah. And he gets another chance to cut someone. That's that's how he sees it. And that final fight, the sandworms, and oh gosh, so many things. Also good. Uh, yeah, that's. It's the thing I looked forward to after seeing the first movie. So, <laughs> do, you, do you like the 80s Dune or this one better? Oh, <laughs> see, I haven't yet to see the 80s one. Uh, at least not all the way through. And there's, you know, again, there's differences. Because, you know, there's this whole concept of Paul's sister as well as kind of a big deal, too, in the book, right? They treated her differently as well. Like they, the fact that she was not even born by the end is different from the novel and even different from the first book, uh, first movie. So it, it's, it's interesting. I feel like both have their merits really, you know? So this one I feel like it really comes from the grandeur and the vision that, you know, the director brings to it and the kind of presentation. So yeah. Yeah, if you, if you want to have an idea of how the 80s one turned out, if you ever watched the show Twin Peaks? The See, guy who yeah. the guy who directed Twin Peaks is the guy who did the original Dune movie. So that oh okay, I, for, I didn't realize that. <laughs> <Yeah>. All right, <laughs> you learned something new. But yeah, I think the I think the newer movie was uh, better from the beginning because they knew they were allowed to do what needed to be done. Well, unfortunately, with Dennis. Finch, he wasn't allowed to do what he needed to do. There was, he, you know. he was basically told, well, you need to make this into a full movie. And really, that much content doesn't work as a full movie. It needs to be a miniseries or like a part, two-part movie. Indeed. Sometimes you just need to split things up. Yeah. And yeah, I would say between at least the three presentations that I know of, I'd say, like, the newer Denis Villeneuve movies are the best ones. The sci-fi series that they did, uh, I think it was back in the early 2000s, is actually pretty good. Uh, and the other movie, I'd say, is third place. But, yeah, who knows? You get something different from everything. So, at least that's how I see it. Yeah, I, I give it a must-watch. Yes. In theaters. Oh, absolutely, yes. Oh, IMAX see, if you can. See it in IMAX. What are you doing? Go see it in IMAX. <laughs> like, so are you, are you going to buy it when it comes out? First day, I hope. So exactly. it's like a physical copy or a digital? Absolutely physical copy. Or you're just going to stream it? I'll do both the physical and digital. Because usually the they physical come with, comes yeah. with the digital. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. So I, now I actually like the 80s movie a lot. Like it's, but I, I love that style, right? Like I, I totally love that movie. I have not read the books and I've heard like the, there's the comparisons obviously of Dune and Star Wars and that Dar Star Wars is actually very strongly influenced by Dune, um, that, that George Lucas got a lot of his, uh, inspiration from Dune. And Doctor so, Who. Yeah, amongst other things, but so... I and I watched the first movie. I won't say I wasn't impressed, but I was, I was just like, uh, I was bored. I was really bored. And I know that that movie really was just mostly setting up. But to me, like that's not. I'm not going to see a movie to see setup for the next movie, right? Like even when it comes to like the to the Marvel movies, when they were all setting up the characters, I wasn't there to watch 
Avengers get set up, I was just there for those heroes. Mm. And then it led up to Avengers. And then, you know, and then, of course, led up to these bigger things, right? Yeah. Turn- I'm also wondering, like, is this going to be the next Marvel Universe? Like, is it going to be that big? Because I would be okay with that if going in from, from the get-go, right? Like, yeah. when I went into the MCU, I was like, oh, this is intended to be a long game thing. Now, if this is going to be a long game thing, okay, fine, then I'll sit through a, a boring movie, you know, for all the exposition, whatever. To me, I've always thought, and that's why I love the Marvel shows, is because they're episodic, right? Like, comics mm-hmm. are episodic. Uh, books are episodic because they go by chapters. Yes. So why wouldn't you do a show? Okay, I get it. You're not going to get the same budget. But hypothetically speaking, if they were to have the same budget, would you rather see this as a show? If they had the same budget, see, that would be interesting. Um, like if it was everything was the same quality. Hmm. You know, I think it would have its merits then, and that's what's really interesting. I think the way that they edit this out, like especially when it comes to his sister. Like, by the end of the book, she's born, and she's a fully talking two-year-old girl <laughs> that is, like, fully aware of herself. It's one of the weird things, right? Like, I think she was, I think it was in the older movie where they basically presented it as best they could. Um, so I think it would allow for something like that for to show a much longer growth in that case as far as Paul's character. Like, it would feel like he was among the Fremen for much longer. And I think there'd be an advantage in that, yes. With the way it's edited and presented in this, I you know I think it gets the point across. So, plus you get the um, the idea that you could see the story self-contained in a few, like one or two sittings, even though the movies are like two hours long. Okay. But, you know, I I think yeah, it kind of depends on the person. I I guess I'd say if you, I think I'd enjoy both. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a question: Do you do you have to watch the first movie to watch the second one? I would say it's better to. I think you probably would need to. Mm-hmm. But it's been a while since it came out, so do you would do you feel like people should watch it, watch the first one before? Because I don't like the idea of going like, okay, if I'm going to go see this movie, I have to rewatch the first one to get this one or to so that it's enriches it when it should be fine on its own. Just watching, just having watched the first one is good enough. Mm-hmm. You don't have to go and rewatch the first one mm-hmm. to but, see the second one. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there are some things you definitely, if you didn't see the first one, you would basically not know. Like, there's the term Quiz Tatarak. What does that mean? Um, and, you know, what the organizations are, what some of the powers that Paul and his mother use, stuff like that. But, I mean, I would say if you didn't see the first movie, just go into it understanding that it's this evolution of a character i think that's the biggest thing to take away from it is that you're going to watch a character change and they're going to be completely different by the time that movie's over and i think people would enjoy it on that level so i i was not that really that interested based off my experience with the first but hearing you guys talk about it and other hearing other things about it on social media have gotten me interested. Now, I'm still not going to see it because I have three kids and it's nearly impossible for me to to manage that. So that's not going to happen. But I will definitely, most definitely watch it once it comes out stream because before I was like, ah, maybe. But now I'm like, okay, I definitely got to check this out. So I've also heard like really interesting things like the villains are like pure white, right? <laughs> and then it seems like oppressed people are brown, you know, and so it's a very, like, they're, I mean, when I say white, like, they are alabaster, like, they are pure, you know. I mean, sort of, there's. Mm-hmm. Like, they're, they're, they're bleach, their skin looks bleach white, right? <laughs> That's just one race from, uh. One word. But I'm just saying, like, they are the villains, right? Yeah, that's what well, it's they're, it's, 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 they're it's, part of the villains, because there's. It's, it's not good and evil. Mm-hmm. They're it's, just different factions. Yeah, it's a different faction. So, but, yeah, the effects, like, because it's with their planet, like, they make them, at least when they're on that planet, right, because I think it was the Getty, the Getty Prime scenes um, where they had this really interesting, like, monochromatic presentation that was that kind of actually made me really happy watching it. It made it look good. So, yeah, in a way, they, they you know, 
you could interpret it that way, but that's not. It's only when they're on that planet that they look pure bleach. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, I've. I mean, even seeing the first one, like they look like phenomenal movies. Like you can't deny that they're phenomenally made movies. Yeah. And stuff. So, all right, cool. So, must see, must buy from the both of you. Yeah. Right. Yes. Cool. What do we have next? Kung Fu Panda. I want to hear about it. I wanted to take my kids to go see it. There's been a lot going on. Yeah. Hopefully, maybe I can take them next week. We'll see. So, yeah, tell me about it. So, yeah, Kung Fu Panda. I actually saw it, and, you know, it is absolutely what you would want out of a movie like that. It's still very, you know, very kid-friendly. You still see Poe sort of change. They have a good story with it, you know. They, I mean... I don't know. Can I can I spoil some parts? Like, do you need sure? Because really, it's about the idea of succession. But we are talking kings and successions. <laughs> Even you can't be caught unawares. Right. Poe is at the point where he has been the dragon warrior for so long. He's told you have to find your ne you have to find the next dragon warrior. You need you need to find who's succeeding you. And he goes. What? Like, this is all I've been for so long. You know, I, I, it's one of the things that I think I've especially, like, when I heard and saw him do that, I was like, high school band. I was a band kid. Mm. That was all I did for so long. Which of the big wicked blitz did it? Who of the crew would commit this crime? My little brat make a mommy go splat. It's a story pretty gory for a nursery rhyme. Which of the big wicked blitz did it? Which of the spawn had the brawn to kill Willa Baby? And when, uh... When you're told you have to find something else to do, it's like, uh, you know, there's the fear of that. So it's his exploration of being able to settle with that. And I think it actually turned out pretty well. A lot of people would say the way that some of the story was presented might have been weaker. The Furious Five, for example, don't really make an appearance until the end of the movie. Like, a lot of people like those characters, so that it's really just about Poe and this one other character he journeys with a lot. Okay. So the the story, I think, is a good one to tell. So they picked a good one for it. Uh, and then there's the soundtrack. There's the whole thing. You know, if you, if you haven't heard Jack Black perform Hit Me Baby one more time, you need to fix that. Because <laughs> uh, that was absolutely uh, one of the things that was the, one of the best things I've heard in a long time. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, and and it's funny because my daughter has been so obsessed with Britney Spears lately, and I'm like, we got to show her the Jack Black versions now because they're they're so great. But yeah, that's great because I didn't hear that much about it. I feel like I don't know if the promotion there wasn't that much or or what's going on. I don't know if there's still fallout too of like the strikes, like so they didn't preemptively you know like work on the advertising for these things, you know. I don't know, but I don't feel like it was very, it wasn't promoted very well because I was like, what is even the story of this one? So it's good to find out it's about succession. That's really, that's really interesting. Cool, awesome. So, and what, what score would you give that? I would definitely say if you're a fan of Kung Fu Panda, it's a must go, but um, if you're not able to afford it, you could probably wait until you watch it on, uh, watch it on video, but... I'm a big fan of Kung Fu Panda, so yeah. I had to go yeah, see same. it. Yeah, Jack Black. Love that guy. It's Jack Black. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Cool. Invincible. Invincible's back. We have a season two, part two, and I don't know if they put like two episodes out right away because it felt really long, but it felt like a smooth, easy view, right? Yeah. Because he's like, it takes a little place after the previous season where uh, his dad is gone. Like, the Viltrumites took him, and they're like, hey, now you're the new Viltrumite that's supposed to watch over Earth. Like, he's going to do what they say. Like, I don't know, like, what they were thinking. Like, yeah, sure, I'm going to just do what well, you guys said. You know, in an alternate world, he does. Yeah, in an alternate universe, he actually does a lot of times, like, side with his dad. So, but anyways, so yeah, but that was really interesting, just that interaction with, like, his stepmom, you might call her. <laughs> <laughs> which yeah. is the insect lady and she's just talking about how like their lives are a lot shorter they're a lot shorter so they don't really bother with like you know holding grudges they just move on they just move forward right mm. and so there's a baby and he's half like insectoid and half viltrumite and so she's like hey we're gonna die and he's not gonna have a mother so will you take him 
and you're like, wow, this is crazy. And then so now like his mom's taking care of his uh, of his dad's other, other kid. Wife? Yeah, yeah, like wow, it's, <laughs> it is all kinds of messed up, and it's just crazy. And you can't take the kid out in public because the kid's got like he's purple. purple. Skin. Yeah, he looks like Purple Man, <laughs> but he but he looks like the main character, younger version of the main character. Yeah, because the dad's traits really pushed on, which makes sense for Bill Termites. Because hmm. termites tend to take over even their biology. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. like, when they mix with humanoid creatures, a lot of times their offspring ends up being more powerful than... Potentially termites Than uh -huh. the original race. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Okay. I mean, admittedly, I'm here... And I haven't seen a lot of it. This sounds really interesting. <laughs> well, I love the idea of Invincible just because to me it's like a what if of Dragon Ball Z mixed with Superman and other like comics. Because it's like Viltrumites are essentially Saiyans, but it's like if the Saiyans actually did take over, well, like they weren't conquered by Freeze and they just did take over everything, you know. Mm. And that's what they do is they send people out to just take over. Oh, and then, so this is like if Gohan was to fight his dad, you know, and the mm -hmm. race of the Saiyans, kind of. But then, like, his dad is also, like, the Superman of... And then there's other superheroes, too. So, like... And you can obviously tell, like, who's a ripoff of, like, Martian Manhunter, you know, and <laughs> oh, Superman, no, no, no. and the freaking... The Flash, The you know. Aquaman one was just too funny. Yeah, the Aquaman's hilarious, because they just go crazy with it. They're like, this guy's a freaking fish. <laughs> yeah, like, it's literally just looks like a Magikarp head, and then a human body, and you're like, what? So, I approve of this. But yeah, dude, it, the thing is, it is brutal. Like, mm. it's messed up, it's brutal, it's gory. Smurge Billy. Like, if you, you, you are not used to it, like, it's really kind of rough to just, watch because it is brutal. Just watch the first episode and the last scene of the first episode gives you an idea of what the series will be like. Because mm. that, the first, I'm not going to say what it is because it's just too good, but the last scene, you just, it's just the biggest WTF you'll ever see. <laughs> but yeah, so in the new, there's also like, so they have new Guardians, which are essentially like the, you know, Justice League. And this one is, they're, they're going with the story of like essentially the, the Martians and they look like Martians from like the Manhunter, you know, mm -hmm. from, and they're doing essentially Starro. It's essentially Starro or, mm. you know, is what it is, that's what they're doing. Okay. But like I said, to a whole different, like messed up level. And uh, it's, it's interesting and it's, it's really awesome. And I, I totally dig it and it's, it's a good time. <laughs> yeah. And pseudo love interest is such an interesting character, Eve. Oh yeah, yeah. Eve is awesome. She's just crazy. Like the power she has is just insane. Well, I better get on this thing, man. Oh yeah, I, yeah. It just feels more like I've heard so many things because of the brutality. That's I'm like, huh? Okay, let's just see how brutal this gets. <laughs> yeah, but they have J.K. Simmons voicing Omni Man, mm -hmm. and it's just so perfect, and that he he portrays it so well. Oh yeah. And then they have Stephen Yoon, the the kid, mm -hmm. and uh, Stephen Yoon really blows out of the water because i he's an actor i have mixed feelings with because mm. uh, i've watched the walking dead so hence the mixed feelings oh, he gotcha. wasn't bad in it though he, he was good he wasn't, that, that show was just the writing was bad so he was portraying it to the best of his ability but it's still because he's done a lot of good work actually like he does a lot of good voice work he yeah. was in voltron mm -hmm. as well yeah and he's and he's in a lot of his movies and, and shows have been really really great but yeah i it's for me it's a must see like you definitely yeah. have to get on it i mean you might want to wait if you're the kind of person that prefers to binge wait because they're doing the weekly thing it can be annoying i think for this show specifically i think it is annoying like i don't like doing the <laughs> weekly thing for this show specifically because they do leave like these cliffhangers and you're like oh my gosh i don't want to have to wait <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's been pretty great, pretty gruesome, and pretty pretty great. So yeah, for me, it's a must see. It's a must watch. Must stream on Amazon Prime. 
So also, oh my gosh. So <laughs> let's uh, let's let's move on to uh, Hollow because that's what it feels like. I mean, Halo. <laughs> <laughs> Halo. Uh, I mean, there's some remnants. Look, when the show is cool, it is peak awesome, right? When you yeah. get Master Chief, when you get the Spartans doing their thing, even when you get the the other chicks, the Spartan 3s, like, their yeah. armor looks cool. Yeah, they're not as cool, but they still look cool. <laughs> when they're doing their thing, when you see the ship, the space battles, and... Radar about to be jammed. And the stuff that you're there for, oh, beautiful. But it's so rare. Like, it felt like they just packed all the cool stuff into the finale, and then that was it. But they also packed too much in, right? Yeah, like, it was just too much going on. Like, uh, I felt they should have gotten to the Halo sooner. It would have been better. Instead, they're having to do this backwards way of introducing the Flood. Ooh, where, okay. uh, instead, uh... They find uh, spores in an old uh, Forerunner ruins and let it out. Which doesn't really make much sense if you know the Forerunners of Halo. Because mm. they wouldn't do that. Because uh, they built the Halo for one reason one reason only. To obliterate all life form to get rid of the Flood. So they wouldn't keep any remnants of the Flood if they could help it. Because they already did the... The reason why the Forerunners aren't there is they already used the Halo once well, to try to get rid of the Flood. Man, because I mean, I admit, I, I will openly admit to this, like, I, I mean, I'm wearing the shirt. I put enough hours into Halo 2 back in the day that, you know, I care about Halo. And I haven't touched a lot of this stuff because of, you know, how unfortunate it's been. But if there's at least some good presentation with a lot of the uh, battles I, you know that could be worth it you know to see it at least if that's what you if that's what you say it's a trap don't do it <laughs> <laughs> well as i've said i am part of a lot of groups myself and for us and the the audience really does seem divided there's some people that absolutely love this show and then there's some people that absolutely hate it it doesn't seem like there's much people in between mm. because it's it I'm not even a hardcore Halo person, but I know writing well enough to know that this show is not well written, you know? And so, I mean, if, if anything, if you're going to watch anything, start with season two, because season one is not worth watching. It's a waste. It's a complete yeah, waste of time. They they spend too much time on the side character, and even now you're barely seeing results of said side character. They spend all the time Interesting. Okay. season one for... Yeah, it was just very disappointing. Like, they could have been done so much better. And then the whole tease of having... Well, they have this weird gir human girl that's with uh, Covenants. And she mm. was born and raised by the Covenants. Okay. <laughs> and she apparently has the abilities to activate the Halo like Master Chief does. Huh. And basically, the person with her goes by the name of Arbiter, but it's not the one you thinking. We're so really? it, and, and then <laughs> when you Chief and Arbiter finally meet, they fight each other and the, the supposed Arbiter dies. So hopefully that gives room for the Arbiter we all like. <laughs> Bring Keith David in. Yeah. Like, why do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because in the Halo... Halo 2 and Halo 3, when you do multiplayer on the campaign, in Halo 1 you're just both Master Chiefs, but there's another character that shows up as an ally and happens to be a Covenant the guy, but he's still your ally, and so once you're, once him and Chief are together, it's player 2's a Covenant and player 1's Master Chief. And in Halo 3, it pretty much... Like, just right after, the, like, the first or second scene in Halo 3, the Arbiter is back, and, yeah, Player 2 plays him again. And it, so I'm... It's sad to not see them... See them tease so much of that character and not bring him in. Man. Because he's such a good character. 
to see his development was really cool in Halo 2, where you see, like, why he's doing what he's doing and why he would even align himself with the demon. Mm -hmm. With the demon. Man. Yeah, oh, I, I mean, once again, it, I didn't get that from the show. I, I don't feel like there was good character development. I, I, the, the story arc was a mess. It's all over the place. Even the finale didn't feel like a finale. Mm -hmm. It feels like... The like I know they're sold before the finale. Yeah, it does. It does. It feels like, oh, hey, there should be one more episode or two more episodes maybe at most. But I know they're just going like, yeah, we're going to leave at this cliffhanger so we can make a whole other season. And I'm like, I don't even want a whole other season. Like, just give me one or two more episodes and I'm good. Like, if we're going to complete this, because I don't really want any more than that. Like, And it's annoying that they don't like... They reveal what the Halo does, but they don't actually reveal why it was there. Because if you understand the Halo's there to get rid of the Flood, which you got to start seeing the Flood get created, you yeah, didn't really like the plot twist to have a Halsey Flood infected. Hmm. But yeah, then again, Halsey, they just really haven't done very much good with, the, with her as a character, unfortunately. Mm. And the daughter, they just have her show up whenever they need another scientist. Mm. But it's really weird. Keys and uh, Halsey have a kid. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Then, then, I mean, I'm the type of person that will give everything a chance. You know, I, I'll, you know, I will take your suggestion. I will start with season two. Yeah. And I'm yeah. going to see how this goes. I'm going to figure this out. I mean, I will say one of the coolest characters, he is like, he's an ex-Spartan, and that he's a cool character. Yeah. You didn't, and once again, I don't feel like you needed even the first season for it's, his moments to still be awesome. I mean, there are some decent moments, but like overall, yeah, I'm just like... Well, the best parts were yeah. actually after the fall of Reach with that character and Halsey. Yeah. They're back and forth. Like, you finally got to see like some type of traits with Halsey at all instead of just I am here for pure science and I will make science better yeah I don't know I I I can be honest I have been suggesting people not to watch this show yeah. I'll be like I'll, I'd rather give you the synopsis of what went down it's better off to you're better off playing the games and reading the books and doing that instead of watching this. Now, if you want to see it, go. It, like you said, if you want to, if you really want to give it a try, give it a try. I mean, when you're single, you have more time. You don't have kids. You have the time to waste. Okay, go ahead and waste that time. I got three kids. I don't have the time, and I'm wasting my time for you. And I'm saying it's a pass. Still, it's, it's still a pass. Yeah, it's a pass. Caution. All right. Well, I'm gonna proceed with caution. Pass that. I will waste my time. All right. <laughs> also, back to Halo Infinite. <laughs> we'll see if they make another season. I don't know. I feel like... I was surprised it got a second season. Yeah, I'm surprised season. it got a second season. So, honestly, I won't be surprised if they get a third season because this one was better. And I feel like, like I said, the, the audience is divided based off the groups that I'm following. People have been... Actually, I made, I made one comment about how I thought the writing was bad and someone went off on me. And I was like, what is wrong with people these days, too, of being like, I know I'm not a big dude, but you don't know the life I've lived. You don't talk to people like that. Mm. You don't. You don't know how they're trained or how they're not trained. You don't talk to people like that. People are way too comfortable with talking however they want to people online. They're way too comfortable. They're, they're, they, you can tell that people are in a generation of where if you say something, you can get away with it because where we come from, you get punched in the you, face. You get punched, yeah. You want a piece of me? I don't want a piece of you. I want the whole thing. At the least. <laughs> at the least. At the least. Okay, so this younger generation? No. No. I'll pull Liam Neeson. I will find you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but, uh, anyways, let's move on. There was a Nintendo Pokemon Direct, 
And I was all pumped and excited, and it was weak. I just felt like we had to cover this because we've been co we covered Xbox mm -hmm. a couple months ago. Then we covered State of Play PlayStation last month. So I'm like, this was weak, and you can tell that Nintendo's like they're starting to die down because it's the end of their console uh, generation, and then mm -hmm. they're they're gonna you know they're probably amping up for, for their next, the next one is. yeah. So I hope it's the super. So, uh, Super Switch or Super Nintendo Switch or Nintendo Switch nah, Super? I want Switch Advanced. I'll go Switch Advanced. I'll, I might vote Super Switch. <laughs> I want <go> Super Switch. <laughs> so, but yeah. So, anyways. Yeah, I, I want to go off of the Game Boy family. So, Switch Advanced. <laughs> the Direct was Super a pass. Switch. I'm. I'm just gonna say the Direct was a pass. It's not. It's not. Mm. I put it on. Watched it with the family. None of us were interested. Great. You know what I was interested in though. The Acolyte trailer. Yeah, yeah. That looks cool. They're doing it way before what is supposed to be like a hundred years. And I love like just seeing like the flood of lightsabers come on. And then there's like one, you know, red one or something. Ooh, there's they're even doing a light whip. I saw there's a light, there's supposed to be a light okay, whip. Too. I haven't seen that part of the uh, if they do it, absolutely. So which brings in like, does that mean they're gonna do Lumaya from the you know from the from those comics i mean from the well i think she was in the comics but all the extended universe mm -hmm. that is not canon but then they keep on incorporating characters Dick like Luke darth bane and, and 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 stuff like that yeah uh but i i thought it looks really cool i'm totally down for it and but there there is some but the it seems like there has been some backlash I've seen backlash like just because people hate Disney Star Wars. They're just there's those people that are like I hate Disney Star Wars. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. what, and they're just complaining no matter what. But there's apparently there's some people that hate it for other reasons. The, basically, uh, the person directing it was involved with uh, some uh, sex trafficking, you could say. Yeah, like uh, hate. <laughs> the, it's uh, Harvey Weinstein's former assistant, who was. Who got off clean while everyone else she associated with is in jail. Well, that makes things more complicated. Great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's a little harder to separate the art from the artist when it's the, when those are the stakes, right? Indeed, it can um, be. Yeah, I'm very conflicted about watching it because of that. Because it's like, I don't want to support this person. Yeah. I mean, I, I've heard things, too, about how... There are some people that were brought in on this project that have no, that know nothing of Star Wars, just mm -hmm. so that it's so they don't aren't like trying to repeat beats, you know, mm -hmm. or like trying to do anything that's been done before. Like they they're just completely new to this universe, and that could be a good or bad thing. So, Indeed. but also I'm sure they have people that do know this stuff. So it's like, well, if you mix the people, that's fine, right? Mm -hmm. Like or. It, it's just good to uh, like have an outside perspective, you know, Indeed. too. So especially with a new timeline, yeah. Like, to, like, unfortunately, I haven't read a lot of the novels from it. Yeah, I think it's like High Republic. Yeah, it's High Republic covering, era. So, so it's it's something that hasn't been explored in any live action medium yeah. at all for its time frame. After watching the trailer, I was just really excited about it because it's uncharted territory, mm -hmm. all for all intents and purposes. You know, yeah. We are not. At least, according to what we've seen so far, no Skywalker mentioned at all. No, like, it's just the the the, mis the mystic and the, mis the mysterious behind what's coming. Yeah. There's something in the dark somewhere. And, of course, for something I didn't realize when I first watched it, but for those people that are, you know, big fans of the Hunger Games, the one of the characters is being played by the woman who played Rue back in the day. So, you know, it's nice to have another actress that many people might be familiar with come back, see what she's able to do with this. And especially such a huge property like Star Wars, you know, hearing about anybody coming in, putting their little stamp on it makes me excited. So, oh, yeah. What's her name from uh, The Matrix? Yes. You know, with, so oh, I gosh, see her. Carrie and I'm like, Moss in there. Yes. I'm like, yes. I'm like okay. You know. <laughs> so, I mean, I love the Darth Bane books. I love KOTOR. So I love that stuff so i'm like i'm that's why i'm i'm in i mean and it looks awesome to me so so we'll see i think i feel like the strength of disney star wars obviously has been in their shows mm, i'd agree with that yeah because i've loved so much of i love andor i love kenobi i love 
Ahsoka, Mandalorian, and I feel like all those shows are slightly different. They hate on different aspects of Star Wars, and and I love that. Mm -hmm. So, so something we'll you'll we'll probably cover later, I assume. You know, yes, they, they we're all excited. Absolutely, about this, we'll, so. we will absolutely for sure. We're gonna go ahead and jump into what's coming out next month. Uh, for April, the nerdy stuff, the nerdy April movies, shows, games, and all that goodness. So on the first, we have Great Teacher Onizuka Season 1 on Netflix. There's uh, Strawberry Shortcake's Spring Spectacular on Netflix. I'm going to watch that with my girls <laughs> and, and, and cover that. Then we have Star Trek Discovery coming out on the second Season 5 premiere. So I'm sure they're going to do the weekly thing that's going to be on Paramount+. Plus. Good news. It's the final season. Uh, yeah, we'll I see. I, I mean, yeah, I, I watched the first season. I liked it, uh, and I've seen the second. Hopefully this will give me a reason. Or I might just jump straight into the final season or get cut up. We'll see. And then there's, uh, on the third, there's Wish on Disney+. Plus. That bombed pretty hard, so I'm interested to see how if it's as bad as it bombed. Indeed. Right? I've heard I've heard good things, so I'm, I'm waiting to watch it and see what I can take from it. So, yeah. yeah uh, we have Deceit 2. Uh, that game comes out on PS5, uh, Xbox Series XS. On the 4th, there's I Woke Up a Vampire, Season 1 on Netflix. I'm pretty sure that's an anime. Uh, then we have Ninjago Dragons Rising Season 2 on Netflix. I'll probably check that out for the kiddos. Then Turbo Golf Racing on PS5, Xbox Series XS, PC. Then on the 5th, there's Monkey Man in theaters. That looks pretty cool. Dev Patel producing and acting. Yes. I need to see this movie. Yeah, it looks pretty. It looks pretty <laughs> yeah, wicked. Yeah. Uh, like it, it's like a martial arts movie, right? But like mm -hmm. with a little mystic. Thrown it in feels there? like it feels like there's more to it than yeah. They, I don't think they've outrightly shown it. I mean, like it, assassins. Yeah, and like it's 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 it spies. Like it seems pretty cool. Yes. So next is the beast in theaters. I'm not really sure what that's about. Parasite the Grey season one on Netflix. So if you know the Paras Parasite from the anime, this is a live action. I think it's a live action version of Parasite. It looks grotesque. Like it's it's definitely that horror genre, you know, creepy, weird. Yeah. It, I pieces for my stomach to turn green. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I'll be able to check it out, but I'll definitely try. Uh, then on the seventh, we have Bluey season three premiere. On Disney Plus, I'll definitely check that out. Blue is the greatest. Mm -hmm. Eight on the eighth is Spirit Rangers season three on Netflix. I'll probably check that out for the kiddos. On the ninth, there's Botany Manor on Xbox, Switch, PC. Then Children of the Sun on PC. Uh, Gigantic Rampage Edition on PlayStation, Xbox, PC. On the tenth, we have Fire Buds on Disney Plus. Uh, House Flipper 2 on PS5, Xbox Series XS. I know that House Flipper 1 is on Game Pass, so mm. if you want a taste of it, play the first one. There you go. Then there's Inkbound on PC. On the 11th, I'm pretty sure it's the 11th, Fallout on Prime. We're gonna we're gonna go hard on this. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm gonna I can't wait. I'm gonna make a shirt. I'm gonna make merch that's that shows the vats and everything's like one percent, and then it's gonna say. So you're telling me there's a chance, you know? <laughs> That's that. I'm making yes. that shirt, okay? <laughs> I will make that shirt. You mean not good like one out of a hundred? I'd say more like one out of a million. So you're telling me there's a chance. Even if that's the only shirt we make, it's going to be made. Um... Then there's Let's Revolution on PlayStation, Xbox, Switch. On the 12th, there's Civil War in theater. That movie looks really fascinating, mm. really interesting. Uh, I, I, I'm really interested in that. Mm. Uh, then there's Woody Woodpecker Goes to Camp on Netflix. That's new. Even. I didn't hear about this. Yeah. Woody Woodpecker so coming back? Okay. You, you just heard about it. There you go. So then there's Dora series premiere. I guess a new one on Paramount+. Plus. Uh, my kiddos are, enjoy it now, and, and it'll be cool to check it out. So on the 16th, Europa on PC. Then we have Grounded on P PlayStation and Switch. Planet of Lana on PlayStation and Switch. On the 17th, PJ Masks, Power Heroes. Hey. I'll check that out on Disney+. Plus. I put this on for myself, but I feel like other nerds may check it out. And I know uh, Slay J's into it as well, which is 
on the 18th, Conan O'Brien must go on Max. <laughs> he has like a travel show, and he's going to other countries, and he's just being himself with normal people from other countries, and I can't wait, because I've listened to his podcast, and that's that's where it started, is he talks to people on his podcast, and then so he makes those connections there, and then nice. he's going to actually visit them. So I cannot wait for that. Excellent. I think I'll touch that. On the 19th, the Ministry of Untel Ungentlemanly Weather mm. in theaters. And that is with Henry Cavill. So I'm, I'm automatically down. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I always want to see him, the Superman, you know, beating people up, doing his thing, and being uh, ungentlemanly. Warfare. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm down for that. We have Rebel Moon. I well, somebody has Rebel Moon Part Two coming out on the Scar, uh, the Scar Giver on Netflix. It's not for me. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you that much. Uh, Fourteen-year-old me, sure. Mm -hmm. My mind has grown since then. My power has doubled. <laughs> <laughs> but, so yeah. So we'll probably, you know, we're, you know, we're gonna watch it begrudgingly for you, as we say. We waste our time. You don't have to. All right. Uh, oh yeah, Knuckles! The Knuckles show is coming out on Paramount yes. Plus as well, so we're gonna make some merch for that. We already have some Sonic, so now I'm gonna start making some uh, Knuckles as well. And uh, yeah, it'll be that looks fun. It looks interesting. Idris Elba, right? Yes, and absolutely. so I'm down. It's it's a good time. <laughs> on the 23rd, uh, I I don't know if I'm saying this right, but Ayudin Chronicle Hundred Heroes, PlayStation, Xbox, PC. That looks really cool. That looks beautiful. Uh, and then uh, I think it, I've already seen there's like a preview for it on Game Pass, maybe. Nice. Uh, Lunar Lander Beyond, PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, PC. Uh, Tales of Kenzera, Zao, on PS5, Xbox Series XS, Switch, PC. Ooh, TMNT Arcade Wrath of Mutants on PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, PC. I'm getting it. I'm putting out merch for it. Like, we're doing it. We're about it. I can't wait. I even see, like, they made an actual arcade version of it and I, I wish Come I could on. get it but I won't I won't but I wish I could he doesn't want to get divorced let's face it this is not the worst thing you've caught me doing the, I mean I don't know I just I have kids and they spill stuff accidents happen way too often with three little children but yeah, on the 24th, there's Marvel's Spidey and His Amazing Friends Season 3. There's going to be five episodes coming out on Disney+. Plus, So I'm definitely going to check that out. We're all about that. Uh, my kids and I play games. Like, we play this game uh, called Rhino where I attack them with my head. And then they shoot me with their webs. And it's a good time. And then I break out and attack them again. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> On the 25th, another Crab's Treasure, Xbox, Switch, PC, Saga, Emerald Beyond on PlayStation, Switch, Mobile. 26th, we have Demon Slayer, Kumetsu no Yaiba, Sweep the Board on Switch. Then Sandland, PlayStation, Xbox Series XS, PC. Oh, Stellar Blade on PS5, we talked about this last month, and it looks awesome, so I'm interested about that for sure. Then we have Top Spin, 2K25 on PlayStation, Xbox and PC. On the 30th, Braid Anniversary Edition on everything. Ooh. Braid is such a beautiful, mm. wonderful game. Yes. If you haven't played it, this is the perfect opportunity. Phenomenal. And then Sea of Thieves on PlayStation 5. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. I don't know if anyone cares, but I'm sure there's some people. So that's that. And that being said, like I said, we talked about some of our merch already of the stuff we're going to be making for you all for next month. I'm sporting our Dragon Ball style shirt talk nerdy to me because of course um, if you've heard Akira Toriyama passed away which is such an uh, such an icon such a legend is of course Dragon Ball but he also did like Chrono Trigger and then he did Dragon Quest games yes yeah, so he he's just like it's so crazy when people go all he did was put pen to paper and how much, right, like drawing and writing and how much people did he affect. There is a generation of nerds because there's, nerds used to be basement dwellers, you know, attic dwellers maybe. Now look what they are. They're the gun show, right? Like, yes. the, and, and I'm not even one of the big ones. Like there's dudes that legitimately look like Broly mm -hmm. because of Dragon Ball Z. There's dudes that look like Goku. Like, there's a generation, and then, like, even like you said, the other stuff, like, that he's done, it's just crazy how he's changed, you know, how, how 
I he's changed obviously even uh, America, the Americas, Western civilization, because I know that Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z is massive in South America even, right? Because yep. they came, they were there before they, they were in, in the States. So, like, they're, they're huge. It's huge everywhere. And it's so crazy, the influence of the guy just made drawings and, and wrote some stuff, and that's it. And it's beautiful, beautiful. Indeed. So if you want to do it, do it. Be inspired by that. And make, let's create, let's make those stories, right? Absolutely. And inspire yes. people to work out, to do more, to grow, to be better. So, yeah. And then I also got uh, my Asul Beetle pants that I designed. I don't even know if I have these in the store, but I just loved the Blue Beetle movie so much. It spoke to me. I know it didn't speak to everybody. It wasn't really necessarily meant to speak to everybody. I mean, hopefully it, it does to us and then to a certain degree, but I, I thought it was phenomenal. I think it was one of the best things, if not the best thing, that DC's put out in a long time. So, especially if you're not, like, into superhero stuff, I, I think, like, you won't notice a lot of the things, I won't say ripped off, but definitely, you know, we're taking notes from, like, Iron Man, and, and I mean, there's so much, right? There's so much now. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, what about you guys? Well, I mean, that pretty, pretty much sums it up for me. There's a lot of good stuff coming out, you know, so... But you got the out. Halo. I did get the Halo shirt right here, so, you know... And yeah, we're going to have to hook, we're gonna have to hook him up with the Star Trek, oh, you know? Oh, yes, absolutely. We'll, we'll get that Star Trek merch yeah. out there. We don't have much now, but like I said, we'll start pumping it out. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Yeah, so for sure. We'll, oh, yeah, no, that. they might just all forget about Star Trek, like how everyone conveniently forgot about Michael and Discovery. <laughs> <laughs> that was the dumbest thing oh, I've no. ever seen in my life. <laughs> it, basically, Michael Burnham, the main character, when they go into the future, they're like, okay, well, we're all going to forget about this character. That's all interesting. That was really, like, literally what they said. It was bad. Oh, man. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. I love uh, I, I love the main chick though. Oh my gosh. She was also wasn't she also in Walking Dead? Maybe. Yeah, she Maybe. was in Walking Dead. Um but I mean I, I love the first season. I absolutely love the first season of Star Trek uh Discovery. So and I know there's other stuff that's been really good I've heard of Star Trek that's that's out there. What's what's the other one that they have besides Discovery? Uh, I know there's Picard, obviously, which I've yes. heard both good and bad uh, things, but Beyond mostly has been good. Pretty Brave solid. Beyond, yes, Beyond. Brave New the other World one. is out there, but Brave New Worlds is out there somewhere too. I think, uh, I think, no, yeah, not um, Beyond. Um, Stranger Worlds. Stranger Worlds. That's yeah, the one that's I've one. heard a lot of good things about. That one's been kind of good. Even that's Lower Decks. Basically, uh, happens before uh, Kirk takes over the Enterprise, and so it's. Uh, Focused on Pike's uh, turn as captain. Okay, sweet. So, and then you're rocking the uh, talk nerdy to me Star Wars shirt. Yes, and and this is like our so this is like our first one of our first shirts, right? Like our stuff's gotten way better. Like we've added like light swords. Are we? You know, <laughs> beam swords. Beam swords. You know, <laughs> but yeah, like there's some legit stuff. Like we have like. You know, the double one, the, 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 the white ones. Like, we have so many different designs that Slay J designed that are just phenomenal. And I, and I feel like I need to get those ones because they're so great. Yes. But, yeah, there's there's so much stuff. So And what's great, too, is so every month we donate 5% of our profit to charity. So help us help them by buying our merch. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for March, it's uh, Center for Reproductive Rights. Um, last month it was Noble. I forget. I know that for April we're going to do Autism Speaks. Mm. So I've done my research. That's what we're going to cover. That's going to be charity that we're going to be donating to. So please help us so that we can give, get, help them out, right? We want to, we want to make a positive influence on our society, on our world, Absolutely, you know? Absolutely, yes. And that being said, I want to give shout outs because the, the people that have po uh, positively helped us as well. Of course, at the top of that list, and always at the top of that list, we have to give out a shout out to our best bud Atticus, who just continues to grow and get better and do more interesting things on his YouTube channel mm -hmm. as a YouTuber in Vietnam, as a teacher in Vietnam, and just showing us, you know, slice of life, you know, anything, any really anything goes. Like, I mean, now he's covering, he's he did, he's done a deep dive of, of Dune 
on his. So he he has nerdy stuff too. Like we've inspired him to to do some nerdy stuff on his channel. So definitely check him out. He's one of the greatest. Uh, we have Burn Kenshin, the, the superpower list. Check them out on Facebook and definitely on X. We also added, uh, there's Gone Gold Podcast, Po Boy Pod, Billy D's, Gmart 8, Pesky Gremlins. They retweet us a lot, so they're awesome. Cinematic Anarchy, Filmmaker Pod, uh, MK Jekyll and Hyde. They're, uh, they're across the board. They do... Uh, on oh, online web comics and stuff nice, and and I just yeah. love I just love the message that they send like they're everything that they say is so inspirational mm. so definitely check them out the film rage guys those guys they they review every single movie good or bad kind of like us mm -hmm. they waste their time so you don't have to it's and some stuff is surprising you'll be surprised like some stuff you're like oh i thought that was gonna be garbage they give just enough to where it doesn't feel like completely spoiled but they'll spoil if they're like we're gonna spoil so that you don't waste your time because you shouldn't like we have to spoil it so that you you know do that so they're great web imagine service they do music and promote music amerame media they they're similar to us but they're different uh and riot tv they do uh streaming stuff which is hilarious uh, Zarin67, and then newly added is G Nuts of Horror. So if you're into horror, definitely check them out because they do reviews for stuff for them. So that's where you're gonna do your get your horror stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, share us. You know, with your friends, your family, your dogs, you know, your pets, whatever. Let's talk. Let's keep talking about this stuff. You yeah, know, get is... get uh yes. Yeah, we're trying to get to 500 subscribers. We're more than halfway there, so that we can cover more stuff for you and and like i said like us on on facebook and and help us out you know we really appreciate it we love it thank you for getting uh where we where you've gotten us to now on 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 everything we're 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 on everything we're on x we're on the threads we're on instagram we're on facebook we're on youtube of course so talk nerdy to me stay nerdy planet earth